Hi, this is Kathy Dam. I'm just going to give you a short and sweet of some of the tools and tips you'll want to know about in using Camtasia Studio to record some great lectures. There are many more tools than I'll show you here. I'm going to break up some of those tools into other lessons, but I thought I would just give you a quick tour. If you open up Camtasia Studio, you should see this. Don't be intimidated by all the buttons and gadgets. It's actually quite simple. What you'll want to do is click on Record the Screen. You'll have two options. You can record the screen or you can tell it you want to record PowerPoint. I prefer to record the screen, that way I can move out of PowerPoint if I want to, but you can try both options and see what works best for you. Once you click record, you're going to see something that looks like this. Mine's currently recording, so that's why it says there's 45 seconds in. But there's a couple things you'll notice. The audio um, icon here is showing my voice is being picked up. If you're talking and you look over and this doesn't look like it has any color stream on it, that suggests that your audio may not be set up the way you want it to be set up. So I'm going to walk through some of the tips for how to make sure everything's working appropriately before you get started so you don't have to start over if something wasn't right. So down here are some of the options that we'll learn how to play with. Again, I'm going to walk you through some of these options more uh, at another time. For example, this record camera option. Um, if you had a webcam, you could click on this and say record my webcam while I lecture. I always recommend this because you can put this in your final product later. You can edit it in and take it out and if there's a particular spot where you want it there, it can show up. So it doesn't hurt to record that. You can remove it later if you want, but it's kind of hard to fake it if you want to actually have your picture in there later. So we'll talk about how you, to use your um, webcam or any kind of video of you. And then we have the voice narration. So I'm going to click on this. And you'll see that um, there's kind of options here. And it's clearly picking up my microphone, so I'm OK. But if I were talking into my microphone and this weren't showing up, I could click on Audio Setup Wizard. One of the reasons why this may be a problem is that when you have a webcam and then a separate microphone and then maybe a headset, you're going to have lots of audio devices. And it doesn't know which one you want to use for your microphone. So if I click on these options, you can see I have two options. When I started today, it was clicked on Sound Max, and so my audio wasn't working from my microphone. I had to go ahead and tell it I want the other microphone to be the one we're using. So when I click on the appropriate one, you can see that the, um, the input level is receiving the sounds that I want it to. So you can um, mess with these formats to make sure that it's picking up what you need to. If you aren't quite sure if it's set appropriately, set up appropriately, you can click on audio format and it'll help you read a script to make sure that the volume's set appropriately and that kind of thing. And so, you know, again, you can adjust your volume and that. So th one, that's the first thing I would recommend doing before you record your um, your lectures or whatever you're doing is because I have done that many a time where I've done a great lecture and I look and I preview it and there's no sound whatsoever. So that would be my first tip for um, recording audio. Now the rest of these options down here, these are really things that you can do before you set up your um, your lecture record, but I would say you should record your lecture and do all these things first, and then these are things you can do later. You see how it's kind of blacked out, like the transitions. If you, how do you want to transition from slide to slide? Do you want to do some great cursor effects, which we'll talk about more in another time? But all of these things will really come into play more after you're done recording your lecture. These are ways to enhance it. So we'll talk about those more another time. So right now we're going to talk about recording your lecture. One last tip I'll give before we move on to recording your lectures. I had paused my uh, recording so that I could make sure my PowerPoint was set up appropriately, and at that moment my telephone rang, which I think is funny. Um, and it reminded me to mention to you that before you start recording your lecture, you will want to make sure that you're not logged into your inbox, because otherwise you'll get the, the inbox email warnings, um, or uh, if you have any kind of announcements that happen on your computer that will kind of chime in during your lecture, and so that will be kind of confusing to the students. And you may also want to turn the ringer on your phone down so that if it rings in the background, uh, they well, they might get a giggle out of it, but uh, you might want to make it seem more professional. So I was lucky that I had hit pause right at the moment the phone rang, but I rem wanted to remind you, or I wanted to make sure that I said something to you about that um, before we move on. 
So I am now making my screen look how it would if I were recording just this portion of the screen. Um, you can see I have the ticker running. If I had just started, it would start obviously at one second. But I will want to make sure that I move this portion of the uh, Camtasia window somewhere else. So if you have a portion of the screen that's not being recorded, you can move it to the bottom. I have two screens on my computer, so I will move it to the other screen. This is just something to think about is one time I did record a lecture and that countdown was in the bottom left corner of the entire lecture for them and I, I'm not sure that that would have worked because the, when they see, see this stop sign they might think that that's the stop sign they can hit but in fact that's your stop sign to say when you're done lecturing. I'm just going to go ahead and move that over. And so you can go ahead and do your PowerPoint as you would normally. And so I'm just making a fake lesson and I've hit, you know, PowerPoint show. So it's now showing my PowerPoint as I would normally for a class. And you can go through your PowerPoint lectures as you would in a normal classroom. So if I hit the arrow button, it's going to move on to the next slide. You can see here, um, you can have all the typical animations that you would in your PowerPoint. I don't normally uh, use animations that are fancy, but I just wanted to show you that all the fancy ones still work. So if I were trying to teach my class on how to enjoy a movie, I would say, you know, eat popcorn. Here it kind of checker flagged in. Here's one that flies in. You know, sit in the middle. Uh, shush people who talk. Here I have the emphasis thing where it says, okay, you know, expand the, uh, the words here where it says don't touch under the chairs. Um, and so what I wanted to point out was that all of the animations you have in your PowerPoint already, they'll work as they normally do. So if you already have built-in things that make it fancy for you, all that Camtasia is doing is recording your screen. So you can imagine you could be in a very classroom-like setting and it will record everything you're doing. Um, you don't have to do anything new. So then when you're done with your screen, um, you can <coughs> click on Stop. Or if you can see here, if I put my cursor over stop, it mentions at the bottom that if I can't find this icon because maybe I've reduced it, you can hit F10 and that will stop the recording. And then you will be able to edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit um, uh, pause so that I, well actually I'm going to hit stop now and then I will um, show you what it looks like to edit the video we just created. So then you should get an image that looks like this. And actually, I can't record screen while there's this option open, so I'm just going to do some screenshots for you. But you should see, the, see this option. Now, you could select on the Produce button, and that will try to send it to YouTube or another place that you've selected. But I suggest that you save and edit it so that you can make the tweaks that we're going to talk about later. So if you click on Save and Edit, then you should see this option. So you will want to locate the, the folder you want to save your project in and give it a name that makes sense for you. You will then see this option where it's going to um, give you the opportunity to select how you would like your video to be viewed. And I would like to encourage you to select the YouTube HD option. But again, you can work with what you think, you think will work well for most students. I think this setting will work well for how most students will view the videos. Now after you all said and done, this is what you should see. And actually up here is what you will see where it says Camtasia recording file. You won't see these things under here. Um, I added these images and these audio files to it that I could explain the steps to getting to here. So if you were to later add an image that you wanted to narrate, they would appear here. And we'll talk about that in another lecture. But essentially you should come back to this original Camtasia space and um, can start making edits, um, which we'll talk about in other lectures. But you'll see now all of these options are now uh, available to us so we can make edits inside of the, um, of the recorded file.